Aditya, pleasure to have you. It's so fascinating to talk to you. I was just sharing my thoughts with you and learning so much. Uh, you are a true innovator at heart. You know, from high school, you from India you came to Caltech, physics and math. Not many people excel at that, but you seem to have you enjoyed it. And the first company you said you built was in '97. Okay. Uh, let's talk a bit about the technology itself. It was very revolutionary and you just mentioned that, you know, even in today's time after so many years, about 90% plus of the technology is still unused because it's still very cutting edge. It uh, just gives a, a peek into the mindset, the thought process, the vision of evolution of technology. We like finding opportunities where different markets are coming together. In the case of our previous company, it was computers and networking and traditional media. and uh, the internet was just starting and we felt that being able to deliver media over the nascent infrastructure of the internet needed some fundamental technological changes. So what we built at that company uh, during that period from 97 to 2002 uh, was the way to actually compress and deliver video better and even today uh, 95, uh, all of the uh, video infra uh, structure, streaming media infrastructure on the internet key parts of the transmission rely on technology that we built, okay? So that was really good. That was a, a great uh, uh, accomplishment from our, our team uh, that we built around us uh, to deliver that. But then, uh, as we moved on during 2002, after that company was uh, uh, sold, uh, basically we said, what should be the next adventure in our lives, okay? And uh, we wanted to look at the convergence of high-tech and biotech because uh, we saw, felt as we talked to people that there is a really bad need to change how the world comes up with new drugs, okay, uh, how we find new medicines. There are s modern medicine has really done an amazing thing in terms of uh, people's lives, all the things that we can treat today that we even uh, 50, 60 years ago couldn't, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, cancer or various, you know, uh, bacterial diseases or other things like those. But there are so many things we still can treat, other things we treat so poorly. And changing that was uh, the mission with which we started our current company, Version. So Version is taking a very different dimension. I know we talked about innovation earlier, but again, the, the, the cross between technology and innovation, innovation in, in medicine, in medical field. And that is where I think a lot of revolution is happening and that's where you're right coming and fitting in. So let's elaborate a bit more of you know how this convergence needs to happen because without the right technology, you know, physics is only so much, medicine is only so much. So it will be very interesting for others to learn the convergence and how they can you know take it to the next level of evolution. Absolutely. So to build the next real evolution in medicine, okay, uh, these so-called small molecule medicines that you can take as a pill, uh, as I said in my talk, for instance, okay, uh, we all have this common shared vision of the future, okay, where almost anything we can treat with little fanfare with a pill, right? But as we all know, we're very far from that future still, right? So many things we still can't treat, uh, or we treat poorly with a long list of side effects. How do we fix that? Today, uh, the industry finds drugs by trial and error. They take a disease-causing protein, they dip it down into a bunch of chemicals made up and stored in the lab, and they try to find something that binds to it that will actually impact the disease. This way, you can only test so many things, and as a result, the industry, decade after decade, has been seeing a drop in R&D productivity. Even the last uh, three, four years, most of the uh, approvals by the FDA in small molecule medicine uh, has been Me Too drugs, okay? which is terrible. We want to be able to come up with much better treatments for even the ones that we can treat today and so many other things, the thousands of you know, diseases we still can't treat. To do that, we need to go beyond this current method of trial and error. And uh, nowadays there are lots of companies coming out and saying they're going to use the current trial and error data and AI to solve all problems. But the, unfortunately, they're working off of the same small bit of data that's uh, collected from trial and error, and it doesn't allow them to break out of the current mold and come up with fundamentally new medicines. That's where a new uh, technology uh, infusion comes in. You need to be able to start with something and on the computer simulate, atom by atom, completely new drugs and figure out what will be a good drug that will bind to it and be very, very you know, selective to that particular disease-causing protein. If you can do that, then you can make them in the laboratory, 
guided them forward through testing, and come up with things that you wouldn't possibly find with current methods, because these are things nobody knew to make. There is no current you know, experimental data around them. There is no trial and error process by which you could find it. So, Aditya, I have a question on understanding the business. When you are so passionately involved in innovation, both medically and technologically, uh, building fabulous products, how do you then think about entrepreneurship and business? Because you have to have an acute business sense to run a business successfully uh, and build it and then be able to exit it. So in the melee of all that you do in terms of innovation and technology, who and how do you then focus on business? So uh, some of us, uh, even though we're uh, technological founders of the companies, we have had to uh, focus on building the uh, company's core strategy and business. And if you look at uh, uh, successful technology companies o over the many decades, uh, the history of Silicon Valley to uh, companies up in Seattle and everywhere else that have been built, many times it has been technologists that have tr uh, transitioned to helm the company's strategy and business. And it's of, often absolutely key and necessary uh, to have that vision driven by the founders to be able to you know, take these companies to a new place. If you bring in uh, a traditional, since you mentioned this business part, process uh, people, they turn the company into something that fits in a regular bucket. And you will never build the next Microsoft or the next Oracle or the next Tesla or you know uh, the next uh, Google. It requires the vision of the founders. And uh, obviously, uh, on the flip side of that, uh, these companies need to be fortunate to have founders who can uh, straddle both worlds. You know, even even though they may fo uh, they may have a passion or focus for one versus the other, they understand the dynamics of the interplay between the two. Okay, and that's uh, that's critical. And at Version, what we're building, uh, we believe, is the next big transformation in the pharma industry. Think of Tesla as an example, because it's in everybody's mind, right? Uh, they changed the game in uh, the automotive industry. Everybody else used to tweak uh, internal combustion engines, making it a little better. They took a computer with batteries and turned it into cars. Well, guess what? The same kind of change is needed in pharma. And that's what we're doing. We're not playing by the same old rules. We're coming up with the drugs by doing these physics-based simulations and then making them and then using AI to augment the optimization process. And it fundamentally changes what you can expect from modern medicine. I can see that pulsating passion in you, Aditya. I know you'll do amazingly well with this company as well. Thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts and wishing you all the best for the new Thank venture. Thank you, Mateen.